Good afternoon. Welcome back to the BNH virtual event space. We are back with another expert panel. And today we're talking about the new Sony Xperia Pro. I don't even know how to describe this thing. It is that much of a beast in terms of content creation for the professional creators out there. It's a phone, it streams, it's a file transfer um, device. So that is why I brought on my panel of experts. So we got, as you see here, Ben Manlove from Sony, Darren Carroll, and Jason Vong and Vivian Lee. Um, I'm gonna let you guys do the introductions of yourself because clearly everybody always does it better their own way. So Ben, start us off. Sure, hey Derek. So my name is Ben Manlove. I'm a senior pro support representative for Sony. Uh, that means my job is to do outreach and support to working professional photographers and videographers that work with the folks that deal with our cameras in the field, making great, great content. You know, I make their lives easier and uh, I gotta say, I'm, I'm really excited to talk about the Xperia Pro today. Awesome, well, we're excited to have you on. This is my first time having you on the virtual event space, Ben. So hopefully, you know, we make a good impression here. So you, everything is right, riding on your shoulders today. Oh, You're geez, gonna be that's a lot of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't wanna make you nervous in the first minute or two or anything, but uh, we do have some wonderful creators here with us. Darren, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, thanks, Derek. First of all, this is my first time in the event space, so I hope I make somewhat of a good impression. Um, I have been a professional photographer for over 25 years. I work a lot in the sports and portrait spaces. Uh, clients like Sports Illustrated, ESPN, Golf Digest, uh, Dick's Sporting Goods, I'm part of the official photography team for the US Open Golf and Tennis. So I do a lot of deadline work and I do a lot of work for clients who need really quick turnaround on images. And I think that's part of the reason why I'm here because I had a chance to test out the Xperia Pro and the way that it's going to change the how photographers work in terms of getting things in to clients on deadline is, uh, it, it's really gonna be astounding, I think. So I'm happy to be here to be able to talk about it. It's great to have you, Darren. There is no better person than a sports photographer who we know <laughs> that, the images, everything has to be done on the fly. Like you said, deadline, deadline, deadline. Mm -hmm. You are a wonderful voice to have on today. So welcome to the oh, Phoenix thanks. Virtual Event Thank Space. You. And now they are no strangers to the virtual event space. The wonderful duo. You can check them out on YouTube, Jason Vong's video, uh, channel on YouTube. Vivian Lee, Jason Vong, welcome. Thanks for having us back again, <laughs> Derek. So for those of you who don't know us, uh, I'm Jason Vong and together with my girlfriend, Vivian, we run a YouTube channel on hybrid shooting and hybrid shooting, just a fancy way of saying, shooting both photos and videos. And we love to bring fun educational content to those who just want to create something amazing, whether it's mm -hmm. their first time picking up the camera or even uh, pros who are learning to learn about the latest tech. That's sort of where we come in and just provide that kind of fun information for folks. Yeah, so hi, I'm Vivian, and I like to say I'm the brains behind the operation. I don't know about that. <laughs> um, but really, I handle all the business operations behind the channel, and I also shoot all of Jason's videos. And for us, you know, um, travel and on location is such a big part of our channel because that's what we're really passionate about. So the fact that we're able to bring that excitement to our viewers, um, that's a way that we like to engage with them and bring in that content. Especially with the Xperia Pro. So mm -hmm. we're excited to share some of that stuff with you guys today. Well, we're excited to have you guys back for Darren and Ben. It's a pleasure to have you guys all joining us for the first time. Ben, we're going to start with you. You know what everybody wants to talk about when you get a piece of equipment out like this, and it's the specs. So give us a, a rundown of what we're looking at with the new Xperia Pro as far as what does it do? Yeah, well, so that's a really good question, Derek. So, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's funny that the, the device does so much that in a lot of ways we've struggled internally to say, what do we really call this thing, right? Because you look at it and you say, well, it's a phone. And to that extent, yes, it is. You know, it's got, you know, you know, all the phone features you expect, latest uh, Qualcomm, Sna Qualcomm Snapdragon uh, chipset, you know, 512 gigs of storage, all that kind of fun stuff. But really what it is, it's a communications device for creators, right? So the Xperia Pro main features that you're looking at, that's really gonna set it apart, it's got this HDMI input here on the bottom that's going to accept an HDMI uh, source from really anything. Uh, it's going to use, it's got a 5G 
uh, millimeter wave and sub six uh, connectivity in here so that you can take that HDMI uh, input and then stream it out. Uh, beauty of that HDMI input too is it's also, if you notice, it's got this really great uh, 21 nine aspect ratio, six and a half inch screen. It's a 4K uh, HDR OLED supports 10 bit color depth. Um, we can use that as an external monitor, which is really phenomenal. So we've got this, you know, really great high speed connection for streaming. We've got the external monitor, um, you know, and really some pro based features such as the network visual visualizer app. You know, the camera, the um, sorry, the phone has a uh, 360 degree antenna array, so I can get really great signal, you know, great reliability that a pro uh, would expect. And then I've got this really neat app that's going to show me, hey, you've got really good connectivity over here or over here, so maybe you can angle this to get better um, uh, signal. Now, the other thing too is we've got that great you know, ability to hook into really any device with an HDMI output, um, but the, the uh, Xperia Pro also has a really very capable camera system in and of itself. It shares the same uh, camera system of our Xperia 1 Mark II, which has a three camera array, is featuring a 16, a 24, and a 70 millimeter lens. And when you combine that with the digital zoom, it's a pretty seamless 16 to 200 millimeter lens experience. It's got our Photo Pro app, so it's really the same interface as an alpha. So if you're used to uh, great content creation using our alpha devices, this is, you pick it up, you go to take some photos with it. It's just like being at home, as it were. It's also got our Cinema Pro app. Uh, with color space from our Venice cameras. So if you are uh, really want to create some great movies, you could do that here, you know, featuring, um, uh, excuse me, 4K up to 60p and 10 bit. So really full featured for both the content creator, whether, whether you're going to uh, use your, your Xperia Pro to create that content or use another device to create that content and then share it rapidly. Um, it's, it's really a well thought out device. So between the content creation on the device itself and the inputs. It's why we hesitate to call it a phone because yeah, you can make phone calls on it and you know you can text with it, but that's not what it's meant for, right? It's meant for that uh, working professional, you know, whether it's you're someone like Darren where you're, you know, FTPing your files or someone like Jason and Vivian who, you know, you're broadcasting yourself uh, and really anywhere in between, it, it it's, will allow you to do that. Now, now you notice, Ben, that I had absolutely no idea how to properly refer to this because it does so yeah. much. So it's like, send it to the Sony guy, let him talk about it. Um, yeah, it, you gave it, me the hard question. I don't know how to, <laughs> quite how to define it. You know, there's no good roll off the tongue, but you know, we call it communication device, but you know, the, the inclination is to say phone and that's, that's not right. It's, yeah. it's way more than that. Absolutely. I mean, it, it's a great problem to have when you don't know yeah. what to call something because it simply does. And it's not like it does one thing you know really good and then a couple other things right. decent it seems to just across the board and and you hit the nail on the head it's a professional device for professionals yeah and it seems to just crush the workflow now darren after that intro i'm like i almost wanted to skip and i wanted to like this is the ultimate test i mean like i said a professional sports photographer i can't imagine there's a lot of room for error so i'm thinking you, you have to be on the ball constantly you need a device that you can't say, well, I got a bad signal. Tell us about your experience in using this and how this works into your professional workflow. Right, I, I think that that has a lot to do with it because if you blink or look the wrong way in the middle of a game, you know, you could miss the picture. And what we can't have and what we've been dealing with uh, is having to stop and having to, in order to transmit our pictures, having to stop and look and deal with a MiFi device or something like that, um, all sorts of connectivity problems, you name it. Uh, for example, if I'm at a golf tournament and I shoot a golfer teeing off and he yanks his tee shot left into all sorts of trouble and I need to get down the fairway to shoot a picture of his next shot, I can't be standing on the tee box looking at the back of my camera going, okay, I like this picture. I like this picture. I like this picture. And now I need to make sure that my camera is connected to the MiFi that I've got in my fanny pack. And I'm going to hit one button and I'm going to send one picture at a time 
back to my editors. And all of a sudden, everybody's down the fairway. You guys hit a second shot already, and I missed it. With this, I plug the cameras with a USB-C or Ethernet connection into the Xperia Pro, and I walk down the fairway. And wow. the images are going out of the camera, into the Xperia Pro, 5G network, FTPing, not just one picture that I pick, but all of them. So my editors can do their jobs and edit, and I can do my job and shoot. And you know that that that's a game changer being able to do that. Um, we really, for years now, don't get me wrong. The technology in all the cameras and all of the transmission devices over the past couple of years has grown exponentially to the point where we can send a couple of pictures in in near real time. But that sort of defeats the purpose of having us out there because now we're technicians, we're editors, and we're photographers. Whereas with a device like this, where we can reliably stream images from our cameras into our transmission devices and get the entire takeout all at once, everybody's able to do what their job is, what they're supposed to be doing out there. So it's it's a huge improvement. Um, I don't... I work done a shoot in November where I was out in the middle of a lake shooting a rower. You know, no no wires anywhere. And I was able to send my entire take back to an FTP server from the middle of the lake. Um, you know, not just one picture, not just two. So for me to be able to do that and have my editors see it or for me to be on a commercial shoot and have my clients see everything and approve the pictures on site in or off site in near real time is, is it's a game changer. So what you're saying is you don't want to go back to the days of having someone grab your memory cards and a runner. Oh, no. <laughs> and, and listen, I'm, I'm old enough to remember where, when our idea of getting pictures back to the office quickly was driving from an event to the airport and putting our film on a plane to fly overnight to New York to the Time Life photo lab. So, I mean, that's where we've come from since then. But we used to think, handing off a memory card and having some kid run halfway across the golf course was rapid delivery. Now this is, you know, this is where things need to be. This is it. Now for Jason and Vivian, you guys are using it in a completely different way. Whereas streaming, I mean, we already saw if, if anybody watched Jason and Vivian's YouTube stream earlier, if you haven't check it out on Jason Vong on YouTube, but I watched the stream crystal clear. The audio was great. Um, tell us about not only what your experience was like streaming with the Xperia Pro, but how it differs from how you guys streamed previously. Oh, man. Uh, um, we definitely had uh, a lot of fun today. Yeah. Uh, like Derek said, we kind of brought the phone out with us and had some breakfast <laughs> and uh, eat and chat with some of our viewers. I think they call that what mukbang, mukbang in, in Korean. Korean. And it's a very, it's surprisingly like a very popular genre. Yeah nowadays where you kind of bring the viewers along with you and you eat and you like connect with your audience it's like eating it was... with a friend it's like we bring it to them by eating with them and they can enjoy their coffee and and breakfast with us too i didn't yeah, i didn't I... taste any of the breakfast when i watched i didn't i didn't, <laughs> didn't translate for me oh i'm sorry i should we should have done a better job kind of describing the taste you know the flake of the croissant or how, how the go. coffee tasted with yeah. the oat milk and the and the okay, sugar we have, we have round two we'll practice we'll have round time. two we're next not time. we're not exactly experts at the mm -hmm. uh, at this at these types of genres but you know when sony asks us to test out the xperia pro to check it out mm -hmm. you know one of the things that really screamed to me was twitch streaming yeah. and for those of you who are unfamiliar with twitch streaming it's this really popular platform where people go live they play video games mm -hmm. um they do a, a bunch of other stuff they do and, anything on there and like i mentioned you know they they there's a subsection this genre called irl which is in in real, <laughs> in life, real life in real life streaming and they again they bring the viewers along uh, we were watching this girl going out to a halloween party in japan we watching, were they were watching this one guy that he was just walking to chick-fil-a to get lunch <laughs> or something like that in new in york, york. So, um so it was pretty cool because you can essentially bring people with you like on your day-to-day -day life just like how we just brought um, our audience with us to like our local coffee shop and we were just like hey let's just chat and I love it I love how casual it is that we mm -hmm. can be you know I think someone was asking us in the live stream they're like 
is there secretly a computer behind the setup right now? We're like, no, I, you know, I, I picked up the camera. I picked up the camera and I was just going like 360 with it. You know, not 360 as in 360 camera, but 360 perspective. And I was like, look, guys, there's no voodoo magic. There's no uh, Wizard of Oz, you know, giant there's head. No extra cord yeah, wizard. <laughs> you know, there's no giant head, you know, behind the thing pulling strings. It's just this device right mm -hmm. here. And I feel like something like this allows us to be a little bit more mobile, mobile and nimble, you know, just to be like, hey, we can, you know, hopefully we can do this a little bit more when travel opens up again. We can yeah. just be like after a day of shooting and we're just sitting down, chilling at a cafe, mm -hmm. chilling out for lunch. And we can like share photos, share whatever we got, the shots thereof, you know, because we because we like travel, and we do on location so much. A lot a lot of times I want to see like Jason's natural reaction sometimes like we don't get to capture that on camera like there's sometimes like we'll like be in a place where we're like oh my gosh this is so amazing and then I'm like wait was I rolling the camera did we get b-roll because like we're just really immersed in the moment so just the fact that we be able to have this as an option to bring with us so that we show everything live and essentially really Absolutely. real um I think it's really cool I think uh we were in Japan like for autumn and then we were I was climbing up at least to go see <laughs> Mount Fuji and it was a it, it almost turned out to be like a very disappointing day because the cloud Fuji. cover which was super intense and I was like mm -hmm. oh man and I was like documenting it you know my journey all the way up to the uh, pagoda to catch the glimpse of the the epic mountain but I was just like doing 15 second stories you know but I'm just thinking with the Xperia Pro I could have set this up because you know, I brought that with you right when I was about to give up the wind, the gust was just blowing the clouds <laughs> away and I was freaking out internally and externally kind of. Yeah. <laughs> and I was and I was just thinking back to that moment. I was like, if I could have set this up and just capture that mm -hmm. gust, that wind and, you know, the epic review of Mount Fuji, I think that would be awesome. So there's a lot of potential, I think, for creators such as myself, IRL, Twitch streamers or any professional who's looking to you know, set this up and do some live streams. I think this is portable, mobile, really casual setup. And we love it. We love it a lot. Yeah. What, what was you guys' main downfall in streaming before? Was it just being more or less tethered or having to sacrifice quality connection? This was really for, big. For, there was one time we had, oh, sorry. I was going to say, well, there was this one time we did this live <laughs> stream and we just had our phone with us, but it was during like a release, like a press release of something. Oh, and yeah. I remember um, we wanted to go live to capture like the reaction. And it was funny because Jason was just holding his phone up and he would like point at the thing and then flip it the front cam to like his face and then it will like blow up right onto his face and of course you know we were also worried about the connectivity and essentially the quality that was being produced like sometimes the sound didn't pick up very well or it would pick up like sounds that we didn't really intend to pick up and I know a lot of times after we do these lives you take it off your channel you well, don't really keep it yeah I'm, I'm always very conscious of like people who are tuning in after the fact especially mm -hmm. like when it's live you know you're you're kind of fumbling a little bit you know people who are watching live are a little bit more forgiving but yeah. you have people who are watching after the fact especially something mm -hmm. like a, a launch of a new product like new cameras they'll be like well I'm, I'm not sitting around waiting for like you to like fix for your like camera an hour and, and then we're moving our yeah, camera back and you forth. know so that's why I I always seem to take I always just take it down mm -hmm. so seeing how ha having something like this you know where the quality is a little bit more clear I think uh, I think people who are tuning in after the fact would be a little appreciative of it better a lot more. better quality mm -hmm. too mm -hmm. definitely I mean I think we were at a place with technology where five ten fifteen years ago or when technologies a certain technology is newer we can get over the bumps and people are going to be more forgiving it's like when everybody started doing zoom webinars you know, if your kid comes running, screaming in front of your green screen, all right, it's acceptable. But once you get a little bit further on with the technology now, especially with, you know, with professionals working where you have people who are making a living doing these streams and the viewer expects the utmost quality. Now, that being said, I think a huge thing with this, Ben, is the really the Sony ecosystem being built out. I mean, you have every major brand doing it where you want to keep people within your ecosystem, not just for, you know, a compatibility thing, but it's also a peace of mind issue where I want to know that, hey, if a firmware update comes out and I'm shooting with the, you know, the Sony Alpha line of cameras and I'm, and I have an Xperia Pro, anything that Sony sees that is going to make my experience better, whether it's a bug fix or whether it's an upgrade, I don't have to worry about, you know, a third party brand coming down a year later when it's, a day late and a dollar short, the ecosystem's already there. 
Yeah, and I'll tell you, you know, it's something that, you know, on the alpha side, they've, well, I say alpha side, but really, you know, we're all digital imaging now. You know, Xperia has, is, is part of uh, the same group now, which is really phenomenal. I think that's why you're seeing a, a device like this. You know, but we've we've really built our brand over the past decade of actively listening to customers and then implementing features that they've been asking for. And one thing I, I do want to touch on, Derek, is that the while we talk about you know the Sony ecosystem, and you know of, of course we think that everybody should be in it because it's the best. You know, if for whatever reason you're not, Xperia Pro will still work. You know, it's uh, it's it's camera agnostic in the sense that, you know, if you've made a horrible mistake in your life and you've bought in somebody else's camera, that's okay. <laughs> you could still use this device to live stream, you know? Um, and I think, you know, Jason and, and uh, Darren have, have, and Vivian have all touched on this and that, you know, this is a really foundational piece of technology, I think, you know, in a lot of ways that, you know, the, it was announced the same day as Alpha One, and I don't think that that's a, um, I, that wasn't an accident, right? Alpha One, in a lot of ways, was very foundational for the path that we see forward in stills and videos. But Xperia Pro is that foundational technology for communications. You know, you're seeing that whether you're a YouTube live streamer, uh, you know, a sports photographer, and we're also seeing even interest from TV stations, you know, from uh, newspapers. We say newspaper, right? But the paper part's not important anymore. It's a local news source. You know, all these folks are, are looking at using this uh, into their workflow. Absolutely. Definitely. Now, Darren, is there, other than the file transfer, is, you know, do you, are you a big camera phone user? Do you ever pull out the camera on your phone and use it? I do. I do. Um, and, you know, I've been using the Xperia 1 Mark II for a while, and it's a seamless transition for the, it's the exact same. I think Ben said that earlier. It, it's the exact same camera. Cinema Pro, uh, same thing. Uh, so, I mean, yes, I use it for social media accounts and things like that, but, you know, in a pinch, the, the camera in it is amazing anyway. It's it's not an Alpha 9 II, it's not an, you know, an Alpha 7, but uh, in terms of resolution and file size and things like that, but in terms of the controls and the image quality, uh, it's far and away the best quality I've seen in a quote unquote phone. Um, so yeah, there's that, but there's something else that I wanted to add too to what Ben said, and that is, I think that the Alpha One and the Xperia Pro are indeed foundational and they're meant to work together. And I, I don't have mine yet, it's on order, but you know, when I do get it, that's the first thing I'm gonna do is just run it through its paces because Sony has been great about listening to photographers in terms of, how to make the cameras better, how to make the cameras sort of industry leading and what functionality do you need in it? And you know, we saw that, for example, in the jump from the Alpha 9 to the Alpha 9 II with voice captioning. We had been telling Sony, we need this, we need this, we need this, this is how we work and this is what we need to incorporate this equipment into our workflow completely without having any workarounds or anything like that. And they gave it to us. And the Alpha One is going to be the same thing in terms of connectivity with a device like the Xperia Pro, uh, in terms of uh, image quality. Everything that we have been asking for is being worked into it. So uh, I just I can't wait to see how the two of these things are going to work together. Uh, it's going to be fantastic. Definitely. And, and Ben, talking about that, you know, Darren touched on it. Uh, and, and I think you had, you had touched upon it earlier with the, the abilities of the camera. Now this is directly drawn. I mean, the, the camera, the, the specs and the functionality of the camera is drawn from the Alpha 9 series, correct? Yeah, that's correct. So, you know, if you look at the, the autofocus system, you know, it's got very similar, like the eye tracking, even the animal eye tracking uh, compared to the Alpha. Um, you know, just like Alpha 9, it can sample its sensor 60 times per second for um, autofocus and auto exposure calculations, uh, 20 frames per second for the continuous bursting mode. Um, you know, it, it's, it's the exact same interface as well as, as Alpha, um, so it's, it's very easy to use. Um, 
You know, actually, interestingly enough, the same one feature that this has that Alpha doesn't have, actually, which is kind of neat, is uh, is what we call a 3D ITOF sensor. It's a time of flight sensor. So, it, you know, the autofocus, it's just another assist for that autofocus capability. And uh, we do share that, you know, across the Xperia 1 Mark II as well. And then, you know, on the video side, like I mentioned earlier in the introduction, it shares the same, uh, well, not quite the same, but this color science is derived from our Venice. So, you know, you boot that up, it's powered by Cine Alta, and it, it really gives that creator, you know, kind of this ability to, you know, go from a high-end video camera into Xperia. Uh, and it, it all kind of seamlessly works together, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, with all the, the upgrades and, and cameras now, with the camera phones, you've seen a lot more people moving to streaming. And I guess Jason and Vivian, you guys are the go-to on this with the YouTube channel, a heavy, heavy amount of streaming. I mean, it's, it's, do you find yourself being torn between, you have the, the Sony Alpha ecosystem of cameras right there. It's so easy to connect it now and have this monitor for streaming, but the camera or the, see, I'm calling it a camera. The, the Xperia Pro itself is so functional as Darren and Ben just went into how do you decide? How do you decide whether to stream from the camera through the Xperia Pro or to just stream from the Xperia Pro itself? You know, that's a, <laughs> that's a, that's a fantastic question. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, I guess like on a day where we're just like, all right, we feeling a little lazy today. We'll just, <laughs> we'll just use the, uh, the Zeiss T-Star lenses on the uh, Xperia Pro. Right. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm kind of a quality snob. You can ask her. <laughs> There's moments, yeah. Like yeah. I, I know, like as much as we don't want to like bring our gear around and things like that, you know, most of the time we find ourselves like, okay, we have to bring it because we can use this lens and get this compression and things like that. Yeah. And we end up just bringing everything along with us, regardless, even yeah. though we say we're always gonna go minimal or something like that. <laughs> Especially with the uh, Xperia Pro promo mm -hmm. video that some of you guys might have caught. Oh, um, yeah. We we were at the Griffith Observatory, which is like mm -hmm. a really you know popular spot in Los Angeles. Yeah. And uh, I was like, you know, hey, maybe there'll be a cool little thing that we can do. Mm -hmm. We grab the seventy to two hundred, so we have our friend Tam to bring that lens, and the compression of the lens allows mm -hmm. me and the Griffith Observatory in the background at the same time. And yeah. it's not like you know with a wide angle lens where it's like super far away and I'm like, here, look at this little tiny <laughs> end of a thing right here. It's like literally like right next to me as big as my head. Yeah. So it's just that possibility of just interplaying with these different lenses. Not only do we have the built in lenses on the phone, but we have an access of arsenal of lenses that we have in our kit. Mm -hmm. And another thing that we did, I think it's really cool is that we tap into the, the faster wider aperture lenses, right? We're talking yeah. 1.4, 1.8. And when we're in like low light situations, um, we can we can open up that aperture and just allow in a little bit more light, so the quality isn't as bad at night. That's true. It's kind of cheating too. We have the, we have the <laughs> A7S three. We we took that with us because like when we, first when we were shooting at Griffith, like it was golden hour. So yeah. then the, the like the timing of it was beautiful, and we wanted to capture the Epic. colors. Epic. And you know with with everything, you know, we also wanted to stay really distant, not having to like have to be right in front of the observatory with people and things like that. Yes. So we were able to find like a more remote area that was just a little further off. But then with that compression, because we have the 7200, we could bring it a little bit closer. And then afterwards, we went out to Chinatown afterwards at night. And, you know, usually when we do like live streams or anything at night, we're always like battling with the issue of bad lighting and things like that. But, you know, with the S3. It's cheating. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> I want to call it cheating. I want to call it like high ISO um, performance is hacking. Like uh, it's cheating. <laughs> it's cheating. You know, but hey, then, doesn't, you know, doesn't matter how you get to the to the finish line, Jason. Cheating. Yeah, exactly. I'm trying to phrase exactly. it like a little nicer, but it's cheating. But you know, just what these wider aperture lenses. I mean, you stick mm -hmm. it on maybe something like an A7C that may not have that high ISO sensitivity. Yeah. I mean, it's still great. I mean, like this is a much more, a little, a little bit more of a compact mm -hmm. camera size, you know, or talk My about, baby. talk about your favorite, the ZV-1, you know, Derek, you remember this right here? I remember and, that. I ended up getting a white one. And, it's so cute. And these, you know, the Xperia Pro just plays so well, even with something as big as the A7S III, which is not even that big at all, but as tiny as the ZV-1. So we have options. We have a lot of options. And that's what I love. On a days where we're just feeling like, eh, the, the built-in lenses, 
But on days where like I'm feeling a little fancy, we bring out the big guns. That's usually Jason every day. He'll be like, I'm going to set up for a live stream. Like I'm going to go really simple and then I'll check back in an hour. And he's like, sorry, I'm still setting up. I got to make sure the mic's good. And the yep. it's and the- never <laughs> simple. Like, what? It's never simple. So you, you keep gaffer's tape on you at all times, don't you, Jason? It's like full setup. You can't go any. I, why, why, you know, I already know. I already know. Why did I pocket. even ask? Why, why did I even ask? I, I should already know like that you have a, a fully capable mobile option right there and you're still going to go the full setup. But you, you guys bring up a point and Darren had mentioned it earlier about being out in the middle of a lake. So all the, all the gearheads, all the techie people out there, Ben, are asking, okay, Darren's out in the middle of a lake. Jason and, and Vivian are going, who knows where up in the hills to get an observatory so they don't have people in the background the versatility how are you guys doing it i know that there was some some upgrades to the antenna system talk me through the spec end of it yeah so as far as connectivity i mean it is a 5g device you know which admittedly is still in the in the rollout phase in the us right so we do have millimeter wave and sub six otherwise you know if you don't have uh, 5g connectivity it is compatible with 4G LTE, no problem, or Wi-Fi. You know, we got Wi-Fi. It's a Wi-Fi six certified device, so very, very good speeds. Um, you know, it's it's probably not going to come through because unfortunately I didn't hook it hook anything into this. But we do have a, a app built into the phone um, that you see right now. I'm on I'm on 4G, but it'll tell you where the signal is coming from. So you can orient the device a little bit this way or a little bit that way to, wow. to get that best connectivity. And it's, it'll give you a real-time readout of your connectivity speed. Now, <clears throat> the other thing, internal hardware, I do want to call it to, is there are 360-degree antennas. So it's really not an issue anymore of you know, how you hold it to block the antennas or anything like that. Kind of wherever you position it, you know, the, the device is very good at at picking up um, a network signal. Mm-hmm. And Darren, you, you already put that to the paces, I would say better than anyone being out there running around no matter no matter what. I mean, I, w- I would venture to say, Jason, if, if you were to have connectivity issues, YouTubers are gonna be a little more understanding, right? People in the comment, I don't know, the comment section gets pretty wild on YouTube. But Darren, I mean, this is something where if you're having connectivity issues, and you got the world's top golfer out there on the fairway and you got people probably in your ear on your phone yeah no room for error right i mean you 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 can't miss and you can't get bogged down being a technician uh when you're supposed to be a photographer and you know if this is the final round of the u.s open if it's the winning putt if it's uh match championship point at u.s open tennis whatever it may be people are gonna be clamoring for those images, especially in this day and age of websites, social media channels, everything. They're gonna want those right now. And I'm not gonna have time or the inclination to have to fiddle around with everything to try and get an image out. I wanna know that it's going um, no matter where I am. And the, you know, and and I don't wanna miss the next picture that I need to be getting to. Um, I, I remember years years and years ago when we first started transmitting wirelessly, we had all of these weird setups with you know, a MiFi system and then another wireless router. And we had three different boxes in our belt packs. And every time something went wrong, you had three or four different places you needed to go to troubleshoot logically. Okay, is it this? No, is it this? No, is this? And by the time you turned around, you know, you're the golfer you're supposed to be following and played three holes already. You need to go catch up. Um, and now you don't have to worry about that. You just plug the device right into the alpha, uh, USB-C connection, for example, and out it goes uh, right through the phone. And with some of the apps that Sony has, the transfer and tagging app, for example, you can apply metadata right to those images before you send them. So you don't have to worry about having an editor on the back end uh, applying the essential metadata. In the camera, you can load an IPTC or caption uh, template and have that apply to your images before you send them. So it's all integrated and it, it all is about making the workflow as seamless as it can get. 
Now, there's two things I wanted to ask you about on this, Darren. And, and Ben, you can okay. jump in with the uh, with the tech assist here, because, of course, you know, <laughs> I'm going to want to hear about the tech stuff behind it. But I'm going to go out on a limb, Darren, and say there's there's a lot of gear that gets slung around. Um, photojournalists, sports photographers, you're in a rush. Yes. You're probably it, you, the top thing of your concern is not gingerly placing your Xperia Pro back in your pocket. Correct. I want to talk about the durability. And I can't imagine when you're out on the links, there's too many uh, plug-in stations. There's no outlets out there for plugging in your, your phone. So I want to talk here about the battery life and the durability of this camera. Okay. Um, the, well, the, the unit that I received in November was a pre-production unit. So I don't want to, you know, go off and say, but I will tell you, I spent, what did we spend? We were out at 6.30 in the morning on the water and we came in at 11 o'clock in the morning. It was constantly on. It was plugged into an Alpha 7 S3 uh, with an HDMI cable being used as an external monitor. And it was uh, also connected with a USB-C cable to the Alpha 7 S3 to ingest files and continuously transmit them over FTP. And I think I went and checked my server when I got back and I had transmitted 1800 pictures. Um, but in that four and a half hour period, constantly hooked up, constantly being used as an external monitor and constantly FTPing images over 5G network, I still had 20% battery left when we came into the dock. Wow. So, that that's what I can tell you about that. Um, as far as ruggedness, I mean, I this feels like it can handle just about anything. Um, so I'm not really worried about that. Uh, it definitely isn't a delicate flower. When you pick it up, you know it. You know you've got something. So yeah. Now Ben, this is where you swoop in. And you tell me how many milliamps per hour and what kind of glass it's constructed of the screen. Yeah. So, you know, the battery on the, on the Xperia Pro is a, it's a 4,000 milliamp uh, hour battery life on it. Uh, you know, it, it is a, a, you know, a metal backing on the construction, exactly what that is. I don't have it for you, but you are looking at a much more durable device. And just for instance, I've got my, original, my Xperia 1 Mark II in a case next to it. And I would uh, bet you a bottom dollar here that this thing is more durable without the case. Um, now, even though it's very durable in that case, the, the uh, I'm sorry, the, the backing on it, the uh, device was designed with to be not only durable, but also have good network um, connectivity through that material as well. So it all kind of goes hands in hand. Um, but, you know, as far as dust and moisture resistant, you are looking at uh, IP68 or IP65 68 resistance. So, you know, official uh, moisture resistance. Um, you know, we don't want you to necessarily submerge it, right? That's a bad idea. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, it's really meant for, you know, in the case of, you know, Jason and Vivian are out there streaming and it starts raining, NBD, you'll be okay. You know what I mean? Uh, obviously you want to cover the HDMI ports and that kind of thing, but, um, you know, very, very durable. You know, like Darren was saying, battery life is great does support standard USB-C power delivery too. So if you just need to, you know, plug it into a battery, you know, uh, charger and, and top it off real quick, you know, you do have rapid charging for it as well. So really de designed for um, any kind of scenario for sure. Jason and Vivian, I want to kick it back to you guys. And you know, I, I always love hearing about what's the first thing that jumps out. I think first impressions are huge, especially with a product like this that just does so much. When you first got your hands on it. And Vivian, I'm going to go to you on this because I know for a fact that you did not let Jason touch this thing until you probably had your full run of it. What's the first thing that stood out to you with this device? I think the first thing right, right when I got it out of the box, I was like, this is a really sturdy device. Like I took it out and I was like, it has a good heft to it. Um, not like it's like heavy or anything like that, but it felt really sturdy. And I was just like, this is like a phone. I was kind of like, wow, this is really amazing. <laughs> and I thought like, hey, like this could be, this feels like a piece of gear, like a piece of gear that we essentially are able to add to like our collection. Jason's covering my face. <laughs> Sorry, the face autofocus was kicking in on the S3. So I had to like block our face so you guys can see the, <laughs> the device. But that's initially like my first thought. And then when I booted it up and I, I turned on the camera and then I was like really playing with it, you know, I was like, hey, this is like 
really functional. Everything's kind of laid out very easy. And for me, like it was really easy to figure out, especially with like new technology. I'm always like, oh, like where are the settings? What am I supposed to be looking for? And things like that. And then once I got it, then I showed Jason and I was like, hey, this is the phone. And he's like, hey, it's very sleek. The design of it itself is like sleek. And I just thought, you know, like I wouldn't feel afraid to have this like in our bags or like in anything like you know like Darren mentioned like it's not like a precious flower like there's many times I'll get things and I'm like oh no I don't want to drop it I have to like wrap it in like a case and a protective thing but this felt very like okay like this is just something I'm gonna throw in my bag I'm just gonna start using it I don't have to worry about it like like scratching it or freaking out or anything like that which you know for us we're very careful with our things um or I like to say we're very careful with them <laughs> um, but I didn't really feel like sort of that need to like worry about it when I when I first had a hand at it Jason, was that the first thing that jumped out to you or you, were you straight to the camera, straight to the 4K monitor? I mean, you, you already knew. You already know. You, know, <laughs> you already know. I mean, like, streaming me, it's just like, 30 wow. seconds. <laughs> he turned it on right away. Yeah. I was just like, yes, this is, this is awesome. I mean, like I said, from the beginning, I mean, like when they, when Sony approached us with it and then we're just kind of playing with it, we're just like, wow. I mean, I'm just thinking about the Twitch community. I'm just like, this is going to be huge, you yeah. know? And for me personally, I'm just like, hey, there's there's some, there's some something else about this for YouTube creators as well, I mm -hmm. think. I, I just feel like the the live community on YouTube could be, you know, a little bit more explosive, you know? Mm. You know, I think I think maybe we'll be one of the- We'll kick it off. First hybrid shooters to help, <laughs> you know, put that no overdrive for YouTube, I think so. The, the moment you first got that, like after I gave it back to you and I was like, hey, this looks really cool. It's, you cute. Like it's cute when she thinks she played with this first, but secretly i've already touched I, mean, I, I picked up the package and i was like oh this looks so cool. but i remember right immediately you like set it up on the camera and you were, you were like running around our place like just plugging like, just it in shoving the camera in my face like hey look at this how's this look and i'm like okay <laughs> Any good. anytime we have something new to play with i'm just gonna walk into a room and i'm just like pointing the camera i'm just like oh look at the skin tone oh look at this Every wow time. that's clear it's you know and it's crazy clear how mm. the display is i mean we're talking about you know 4k OLED display, I believe. Mm -hmm. And it's just the colors and everything. It's just amazing off of this, you know, 5G device slash the pocket external monitor. It's 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 amazing. Yeah. yeah, I mean, for anybody who's never shot with an external monitor, it's like, well, the LCD is good enough. It's really not. If, if you've never shot to an external monitor, you really don't know what you're missing. And once you shoot with one, it, I think that's a huge benefit to the, um, you know, the Xperia Pro is that it's you know, you don't have to commit to buying an external monitor because a lot of people are like, well, I'm not going to drop all this money on just an external monitor that I might use here or there sporadically. Mm -hmm. It's like you have a device that's like, well, I can use this to, uh, I can text Jason and Vivian. I can go on Instagram <laughs> and then I can, <laughs> I can use it as a monitor later. So it, it's just that versatility. Now, Ben, we did have a question come in from Danny joining us here on Zoom. Uh, advising on an adapter to connect it to his Alpha uh, 7R4. Uh, so, I want you to talk about the connectivity options. Yeah, so uh, it depends on what Danny's looking for. I mean, the to connect to the camera itself, you know, we're we're looking at an uh, HDMI connection, so it's uh, micro HDMI into the Xperia and whatever you have on your on your camera. So in the case of the R4, it would be, you know, a micro HDMI to micro HDMI. Um, in the case, if you want to use uh, FT, the FTP functionality hardwired from Alpha, um, it's going to be dependent on the model. Um, but you know, we'd be looking at a, a straight USB-C connection, USB-C to USB-C. Um, you know, in the case like the Alpha One, the A7S III, etc. You know, it's just a USB-C cable to connect the two of them. Now, to make that all kind of uh, magic, right? There's um, you know all kinds of different uh, like cages that you could get for your camera and then so a lot of folks would say get that cage and then you get a little um, clamp and you know that you can then clamp the phone onto and see there we go I called it a phone clamp the Xperia <laughs> I, Pro on it a camera <laughs> I, I don't know you know what I mean we need a catchy a catchy name we do uh, we do yeah I, there, you know communication device right now is kind of where we're at but anyways so you'd essentially plug the Xperia onto a clamp onto the cage and then feed the HDMI cable into the alpha or whichever camera you're going to be using this on. That's probably the most common way I think you're going to use it. Obviously, if you've got a bigger camera, maybe you've got some kind of different, like a 
a magic arm or something that you could hook into it. But yeah, anywhere you could mount that camera on there. So, um, and we'll talk a little bit about this at the end, Derek, but you know, B&H has some great kits, um, like a whole mounting kit that, that you can get with the Xperia Pro, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, kind of playing off that, what, what do you need to get going? I mean, is this something where it sounds like Jason didn't even have it out of the box fully and he was already streaming. So is this something, is this just like a plug and play? Darren, you talked about not needing, you know, you don't want to have to have a, uh, a degree in, in astrophysics to work a device. I mean, how, what was you guys' experience like taking this out of the box, setting it up you know, for the people well, here who don't want to commit a month sure. to learning a new device? First of all, I have to echo what Vivian said too. When I first took this out of the box, I was like, whoa, this is, this is a piece of gear. This is not a phone. This is not a toy. This is a piece of gear. It feels like it. It looks like it. You are absolutely right about the external monitor. I never, ever shot with external monitors before, but uh, just, I know this wasn't your question, but I have to just talk about this no, for a second. For um, first of all, being able to pinch and zoom on it to see sharpness is remarkable if you're shooting a portrait or something like that. But also the fact that you can have this and turn it around so your subject can see themselves. Uh, mm. If I'm shooting an athlete that's got a particular pose that they wanted to say, a, a yoga instructor or something that where they're very particular about this hand needs to be over here, this knee needs to be turned this way, they can see themselves. And I don't have to set up a giant laptop or anything like that, I can just, turn this around on the cage and they can see themselves and they can see exactly what I'm shooting. So that's a huge help too. But in terms of setting up, uh, Sony has Imaging Edge mobile software and they have the transfer and tagging app that you just you know, go to the Google Play Store and you download it onto your, onto your device. Uh, and then it's a USB-C cable, just right in. And you just set up your phone for USB tethering uh, in the settings. And you then need an FTP server, but in transfer and tagging, you can then go in and you can input your login information, your FTP address and everything. And once that image goes in, you can set it to either hold it and then transmit it manually, or you can set it to just feed it. And then you're basically streaming um, your images. It's you know, the same as a video stream almost. You're just streaming your images right now. Uh, it doesn't take long at all and trust me, if I can set it up, anybody can set it up. Okay. <laughs> this is uh yeah, I, I'm not a digitech. I'm you know nothing of the kind. Um, so yeah, it it it's pretty darn easy. I think it, it's a great real perspective, Darren. It's like, and that's why we we love to hear where not everybody is a somebody who's a tech reviewer. And right. they talk to the rest of us out here, like I'm pretty much the same way. I know what I need to do. I know how to turn devices on and get the product out to do what I needed to do, but I don't know how mm -hmm. to go in depth to get the full benefits of it. Jason and Vivian, you guys are like miles ahead. Um, so it's nice to see that guys like Darren and I can turn on something like this and, and get something out of it. But was that the same experience you guys had? Did, or did you guys, I know you dug deep, what was you guys' experience on just the usability of it right out of the box? Uh, I, I just want to quickly comment. I mean, like, wow, wow, we <laughs> seem like experts. Believe me, I'm just like, <laughs> I, I caveman a lot of my stuff, too. I'm just like, how do you, you know. This is why it takes him like an hour to set up for things sometimes. Yeah, I'm just like, I, I don't. <laughs> it's not that I mean, he's particular, yeah, we, he's figuring like, it out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, like, you know, like, I just want to reflect off of Darren said, you know, I think, you know, for me, myself, um, a lot of this, you know, we learn with what we're doing, we learn with the trade. And, you know, for me, I want to say a lot of this is like really new to me too, as well. So for me to also like pull it out and be like, oh, okay, I know which cord goes to here and then like set it up. All I have to do is just mount it. I thought that was really, really intuitive for myself. And essentially we just like got it out of the box, took the mount, put that on. And then I'm like, okay, well, there's a cord. I think I know where this goes. And I just like plugged it in and then we were able to like start shooting right away. And yeah. when we talk about what we need, you know, for us, when we're doing like streams and things like that, all we really need is just this device and our cameras and our A game. <laughs> yes. So I, I know we were talking about usability and I think uh, this is something that we didn't, we haven't really touched up on, especially, but maybe someone's question may be like, well, how, how does this, you know, how does the camera, how's, how does the device recognize a camera like this when we have 
uh, HDMI. There, there are, you know, I'm so glad that YouTube, the YouTube app itself are able to recognize like another source of camera. You know, when you click on the flippy, you know, you flip to the front camera, you flip to the three, the wide, the ultra wide, and then you, it flips to the device itself, you know, the, the alpha camera that we're using, which is pretty cool. I know for a fact right now, I don't think the Twitch app can do it, but people who've, who, who people who've done Twitch streaming, Streamlabs, the, a third party app allows you to cycle through mm -hmm. that. And it, you know, they just make it easy. So definitely look out for these apps that allow you to cycle through a different camera source to be able to use um, the- To tap into that. To tap into the camera that, you know, the fancy cameras that we love to use. It, you know, it's crazy to me how normally when you see uh, products marketed, it's clearly professional consumer. There's very little that goes either way or it's for content creators, but it doesn't really work for professionals like who are professionals in a, a different genre like Darren, where Darren might have a different set of criterion that he's looking at. This looks like it goes across the board. Um, and, and Ben, correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks like Sony was really like, all right, it doesn't matter if you're the on the fly YouTuber who needs to stream constantly or the um, photographer like Darren, who's like, I got Sports Illustrated waiting in the wings for 2000 images of this putt. Yeah, sorry about that. My, my uh, connection cut out just for just oh, a moment no earlier. It's, it's the Zoom life. We're used to it. I know, right? Um, good thing my Xperia has a hotspot because it saved me right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was not planned. No, no. So yes, Derek, I think you nailed it, right? So it's, it's, it's really this wide range of, of users, you know, anywhere from, you know, YouTube and, you know, to sports photography, like you're saying. It's just it's this huge spectrum, you know, and um, it's 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 hard to pin down because there's this huge democratization now of content creation. You, you know, at one point it would just be, you know, here's your broadcast people, here's your stills people, and you know now with social media and everything else, it's everybody does everything, you know, and that's really where where this device can do it. And I do want to circle back to, um, forgive me, if this may have touched when we dropped out, but, you know, we talked very little, I think, about the, ex the external monitor aspect. And, uh, you know, I know Darren was, was discussing this. Uh, it really is uh, something special. I mean, it is HDR. It'll accept an HDR input as well. You know, it's 4K OLED, which is better than my TV at home. It looks really nice. Um, you know, and there's a lot of, uh, lower quality external monitors in the market that are still really expensive. But, you know, if you look at it, Xperia will, will do all of that, you know, it'll do that, that streaming, but also do that external monitor and, you know, change some of the habits and, and how you shoot and everything. Um, so yeah, it's really something that, that bridges multiple user camps, right? So it, it lets you do multiple things at once, uh, which, which I think is, is great much how like alpha does really great stills and really great video. This is, you know, helping you connect all those dots together. Absolutely. Definitely. Now that all being said, let's, let's talk promos. Let's talk some deals. What can people yeah. uh, look to get on the, uh, the kits on the uh, Xperia Pro itself? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, retail right now on Xperia is uh, uh, $24.99, you know, um, but right now, b &H has a really great promo with a uh, external battery pack for about 200, that'd normally be $200, uh, you know, it's being included with purchase. Um, we have a number of uh, Xperia Pro grip solutions, you know, including a cage and, you know, a phone mount and all of this business. Um, pretty much all, almost all the accessories you're gonna need to get up and going, both uh, for alpha, you know, like one, if you look on your website, you got some that are dedicated just for alpha, and some that are, are not. So you really got some choices there. Um, so you can buy that whole grip solution. It's about $175 worth of accessories, uh, all included for free uh, with that purchase of the Xperia. Um, and then you're also looking like, I, I, you know, I think you, you, your guys' team has really gone above and beyond. You even included the cameras in some of these kits. Now that's not for free, of course, but you know, you're getting the, when you buy the camera and the Xperia, you know, you can get it all bundled together with the appropriate mounting hardware. That mounting hardware is the free part there. 
So uh, really, really great promo. I mean, you're looking at $200 in accessories that roughly speaking, 175, excuse me, that are gonna get you up and, up and running uh, and, and ready to broadcast, absolutely. Wonderful. Well, thank you for those promos. Like I said earlier, we'll get that information dropped in. So it'll be clickable for you guys to go right to the site and take a look at some of these great options with the Xperia Pro. Um, as we get ready to wrap it up here, I just want to get some last impressions on this. So Darren, we'll start with you. Where do you see this taking your workflow in the future? I, I see it being an absolutely essential part of it. It's, it's going to be just like having one of my cameras. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to go out without it you know i've got you know i've got a three zooms i've got a 400 28 i've got three camera bodies that i never go out on the golf course without and i'm never going to go out on the golf course without this too because this is how i am going to get my files back in now um it's yeah it, it's it is going to become an essential piece of equipment uh for me uh and i can't say that about any other device like this you know i don't keep a MiFi with me all the time uh, because they're so unreliable and the service is so spotty and you know 4G is slow. Um, but this is something that's going to be with me the whole time. Yeah. So it's definitely it, a permanent addition to my kit. Yeah. And minimizing your kit I think helps as well, right? You, yes. you want to be as mobile as possible, not yeah. loading yourself down. Yeah, you know, I don't want to have five different things that I need to pack in my case if I know that I need to transmit remotely. And now we've whittled it down to one solid device, and that's it. So brilliant. Yeah. And Jason and Vivian, you guys have mentioned multiple times like Twitch and really the abilities to just take things on the go with this. Um, where do you see this fitting into the gamer community, the YouTubers, all the content streamers out there? Where can it, this device take their game to another level? I think this is really good. I think it's really just unlocking. There's a lot of potential now, and I think there's a huge shift in essentially how social media is like working and transforming, especially, you know, with people being at home and things like that. And I think it just opens up a possibility. I know for us to innovate and think a little bit out of the box and like, how can we connect with our audience more on a different level um, than before, you know, rather than just like a video or something like that, but how can we be more interactive? How can we engage with them more? And I know for us, it's like because we love traveling we like going out and about it just opens up different options rather than for us to just sit in front of like our desk all the time you know I think you know just like with the stream we did this morning like we never thought we can go and sit in front of like our favorite coffee shop and just like talk to people in for, high like, quality yeah for like 30 minutes without us saying like can you hear us like are the sounds weird is it is it it was it was so clear that a crow that was like bothering us bothering us it was, it was just picking it up it was like caw, caw, caw. and then people are just like yeah we hear the crow too it's crystal clear yeah so i, just I, really I think it's just a very innovative way i will say i i was particularly paying attention to the comments that that's like the ultimate when you go on youtube and watch any video it's like the comments are where all the fun is at you want to see like what people are saying and there were so many comments about the audio clarity and the quality of the video and I think yeah. that speaks volumes because it wasn't like you guys, I can tell by the setup, it wasn't like you guys had like a 20 person crew out there and you set up <laughs> the perfect location is like, you guys literally were just like, screw it. We're going to go where we want to go and yeah. we're going to make this thing work. And it looked beautiful. And I think that's part of the beauty of what we've been talking about for this last hour or so is the versatility where you don't want to have to be saddled all the time. Can you be saddled with gear? Yes. Can you always, you know, get thing, you know, make the preparations to get high quality? Yes. But there's a lot of people out there that are lazy. Not going to say any names, but there's lazy people out there who you're, you're, you need, you demand the utmost quality. And I think this is what uh, the Xperia Pro delivers better than a lot of what's out there. And it does it all in one package, which nothing out there does. So Ben, I think the only way to describe it, I've decided is a master of all trades. Perfect. There we go. Perfect. We're running with- I think, we're I running think you've got with a spot it. in the marketing department. There we go. I should get into marketing. So yeah. I definitely, with this face for radio and these, uh, these marketing quips, I think I'm gonna take my show elsewhere, but you guys have been awesome. Um, ben, Darren, Vivian, and Jason, Pleasure to have you guys on for the first time. Pleasure to have you guys back. 
Um, it's been just great hearing about your experiences with such a powerful piece of equipment that clearly is going to change the way that we create on the fly. So huge thank you to all of you guys. Uh, Sony for sponsoring this event. This is just a, a wonderful chance to get to know this product. And to all of our viewers, thank you for your questions. Thank you for tuning in. If you do have any further questions on this, the b and Superstore is open. You can go on the internet, you can call in. We do have our experts available to answer all your questions about this. So from the b &H virtual event space team and the people at Sony, in addition to our wonderful creators here, I'm Derek. Thank you for watching.